वेलकम बैक स्टूडेंट्स इन अनदर लेक्चर वी आर डिस्कसिंग सेल ऑर्गेनल्स एंड टुडे आवर टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज द राइबोसोम्स फर्स्ट वेरी फ्यू क्विक पॉइंट्स अबाउट राइबोसोम्स राइबोसोम्स आर आल्सो नोन एज पैलेट पार्टिकल्स और यू कैन आल्सो कॉल देम एज पैलेट ग्रैन्यूल्स बिकॉज दे वर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल डिस्कवर्ड बाय जॉर्ज पैलेट so this is an alternative name pallet particles or pallet granules you can also call them second point they are also known as cell engines they are also known as very common term for them protein factories of the cell and they are also known as the organelle within the organelle organelle within the organelle so these are some of the alternative names from uh, for the same cell organelle that is the ribosomes now regarding the discovery they were discovered by george pallet discovered by george pallet that's why they are also known as pallet particles or pallet granules this is about the discovery now <clears throat> moving further we say that they are membrane less they are membrane less means they have no cell organelle membrane less cell organelles found both in prokaryote as well as eukaryotic cells so they are membrane less cell organelles means they have no membrane and they are found both in prokaryotic as well as eukaryotic cell organelles sorry they are found in both prokaryotic as well as eukaryotic cells their nature their nature they are made up of ribo nucleo protein particles so again their nature they are made up of ribonucleoprotein particles that's rnp what we mean by ribonucleoprotein particles is that they are made up of a type of rna which we call as rrna means ribosomal rna a type of rna found in the ribosomes is known as rrna that's ribosomal rna and it is made up of some proteins also so this combination of rrna and the proteins forms the ribonucleoprotein particles so we say that ribosomes are basically with respect to their nature they are ribonucleoprotein particles now we will discuss the ribosomes found in prokaryotes and in eukaryotes the types of ribosomes found in prokaryotes and in eukaryotes if you see the type of prokaryotic ribosomes simply the prokaryotic ribosomes are of 70s type if we talk of eukaryotic eukaryotic ribosomes the same are of 80s type okay now what is this s s means swedberg's unit after the name of a scientist known as swedberg who discovered ultra centrifuge swedberg's unit or it can also mean sedimentation coefficient now what is swedberg's unit or sedimentation coefficient we shall be discussing we put any given molecule in a machine known as centrifuge the centrifuge was discovered by the scientist known as the uh, swedberg that's why we use the term swedberg unit over here centrifuge has marking for example this is zero sedimentation uh, level this is 10 sedimentation level this is 20 similarly this is 30s this is 40s so on and so forth this is 50s 60s 70s 80s 90s and similarly this is 90s and so on and so forth 
when we have to see the sedimentation coefficient of any given molecule in the centrifuge how we do that we put that molecule in the centrifuge this is centrifuge and this is a molecule which is to be put in the centrifuge for for understanding its sent uh, this uh, Sudbergs unit then we make the centrifuge to run and there is a fluid in the centrifuge in which this very particle of which we have to see the sedimentation coefficient is dropped then we make the centrifuge to run and after that when the centrifuge runs and this particle is converted into fine powder and then we see where it settles for example it settles at 30s level then we say its centrifugation coefficient is sorry its sedimentation coefficient is 30s for example it sediments at 50s we say its sedimentation coefficient is 50s or its sediments at 70s we say its sedimentation coefficient is 70s or its sediments at 80s we say its sedimentation coefficient is 80s is it okay so this is how we see the sedimentation coefficient now this s s is the indirect sedimentation coefficient is the indirect measurement it is the indirect measurement of size and density so indirectly s is the measurement of size and density how directly s is the direct measurement of time taken for sedimentation direct measurement of time taken for sedimentation the direct measurement of time taken for sedimentation of a particle or any material is it okay value of s 1s is equal to 10 raised to power minus 13 seconds or it means 1s is equal to 100 is equal to sorry 1s is equal to i have already written over here 1s is equal to uh, 10 raised to power minus 13 seconds time so we say this prokaryotic ribosome sediments at 70s level so its sedimentation coefficient will be 70 you can also calculate it by 70 into 10 raised to power minus 13 seconds you can find that similarly its sedimentation coefficient is 80 as that's 80 into 10 raised to power minus 13 seconds you can also calculate that is it okay so this was about the value of the s and now we will move forward and we will see the detailed uh, structure of the prokaryotic and the eukaryotic ribosomes keep in view that you keep in consideration that the level of information given in this lecture is strictly as for your neat and 11th class syllabus so after that again we will be discussing about prokaryotic ribosomes as already mentioned they are of 70s type now you understand what is s and this 70s type ribosome has two subunits that's a larger subunit which is of 50s type and a smaller subunit which is of 30s type is it okay for example this is the larger subunit and this one is the smaller subunit so this is 50s time this is 30s time you have to understand it very clearly that these ribosomes do not exist in this form which we call as a dimeric form when the two ribosomal subunits get united it is known as dimeric form they get only united at the time of at the time of protein synthesis since protein synthesis occurs in ribosomes and the ribosomes get in dimeric form during the protein synthesis means these two ribosomal subunits unite otherwise they are found in monomeric forms 50s subunit is separate from the 30s subunit now s value the s value is not necessarily additive s value is not necessarily mathematically additive as it is influenced by some parameters it is influenced by size shape and molecular mass the molecular mass of 
binding ribosomal subunits. You have to understand in this very context why 50s why 50s plus 30s is equal to 70s whereas 50 plus 30 is equal to 80. When 50 plus 30 in mathematics were understood it is 80, how it is possible that 50s plus 30s is equal to 70s? You have to understand that very thing over here. It is simple that s values are not necessarily additive. It means that s values not necessarily follow mathematical addition. Why? Because they are influenced by they are influenced by size, shape, and molecular mass of binding ribosomal subunits. It means that if any quantity among them, either shape or molecular mass or size of the particle changes, then the s values will not add mathematically. If there would have been mathematical addition of the s values then 50s plus 30s would have been 80s but there is no such case 50s plus 30s is equal to 70s it means that s values do not necessarily follow the mathematical addition why because there are many parameters if one among them changes size shape or molecular mass the s values will not undergo mathematical addition for example you see this 30s subunit has a particular shape so has this very uh, uh, this very subunit a particular shape, this very subunit has a particular mass, so has this very subunit a particular mass, this very subunit has a particular shape, so has this a particular shape and size. Is it okay? So, its size is different, its shape is different, 50s size is different, shape is different, mass is different. 30s subunit is shape, size and mass is different. But when they unite, when they unite, the shape is neither of the 30s subunit, neither of the 50s subunit. The mass is neither of the 30s subunit, neither of the 50s subunit. The shape is neither of the 50s subunit, neither of the 30s subunit. It is altogether a different shape, size, and molecular mass. As a result, S value changes. When the S value changes, there is no necessary that S values will undergo mathematical addition. Is it okay? Now, after that, we will move towards the eukaryotic ribosomes and its subunits. Then we will move towards eukaryotic ribosomes. As you know that eukaryotic ribosomes are of ATS type, they have two subunits that is a larger subunit, larger subunit which is of 60S type and a smaller subunit which is of 40s type so this is a larger subunit it is 60s type this is smaller subunit like this smaller subunit which is 40s type then again 60s plus 40s is equal to 80s and not 100s whereas the Simple mathematical addition of 60 plus 40 is 100, but it is not the case over here. 60s plus 40s is equal to 80s. The same formula applies over here. The S values are not necessarily additive since they depend upon the size, shape, and molecular mass of the ribosomal binding subunits. This is the dimeric form of the ribosome, and you see that the ribosomes come in dimeric form only when there occurs protein synthesis. When there is no protein synthesis, this 40s subunit is separate from this 60s subunit. It has a, a particular shape, size, and molecular mass. So has the larger subunit. Its shape is different from its shape, size is different from its size, and its molecular mass is different from its molecular mass. But when the dimeric form happens, you see a new shape, a new shape, a new size, a new molecular mass occurs are happens over here of this very dynamic form of the ribosome then what happens then uh, there would be no mathematical addition of the s values as a result 60 s plus 40 s you will find it equivalent 80 s and not 100 s is it okay after that we will discuss another point that is the That is the organellar ribosomes. 
organal ribosomes are some ribosomes which are found in the organelles of some in the organelles like in mitochondria there are ribosomes mitochondria there are ribosomes and those very ribosomes are known as mitoribosomes mitoribosomes and in plastids there are ribosomes which you call as plastido ribosomes and these ribosomes both plastido ribosomes and mito ribosomes are of 70s type though <laughs> though some books mention that they are of 55s type some say that they are of 55s type but mostly the books write that it is of 70s type and particularly your ncrt mentions that they are of 70s type i have already told you some alternative names of ribosomes and one such name is it's also known as organelle within organelle organelle within organelle the reason for saying it organelle within organelle is like this this is mitochondria and in mitochondria you are seeing mito ribosomes what is ribosome ribosome is a membraneless cell organelle and what is mitochondria it is a it is also a cell organelle so ribosome is found inside the mitochondria this cell organelle is found in some other cell organelle like mitochondria and ribosome that's why it is also known as sometimes as organelle within the organelle then very brief about their functions as you know they are known as the protein factories of the cell so functions of ribosomes as you know that they are protein factories of the cell they are protein factories of the cell so they are involved in very important function inside the cell which we call as protein synthesis so are the so they are the seeds where the protein synthesis occurs you see these are smaller subunits of ribosomes these are larger subunits again this is smaller subunit this is larger subunit this is smaller subunit and this is larger subunit over here i have i draw three or four ribosomes this one larger subunit this one smaller subunit and they are arranged upon the messenger rna mrna the ribosomes are arranged on the messenger rna during the uh, protein synthesis and this process where many ribosomes get aligned over mrna this is known as the polysome formation this is known as the polysome formation many ribosomes get aligned over the mrna for the process of protein synthesis and this is known as polysome formation so again very precise about the functions of the ribosomes that they have very important function in protein synthesis that's why they are known as the protein factories of the cell